Hi folks, Nathan here. Hope you're all well. Welcome back to unboxing videos and the second video today. Uh, yes, I, I couldn't. I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait to do another one. Uh, I did say in the last video of the Gemini Eclipse National Express West Midlands bus. If you haven't already seen that one, go back and check that one out. I did say I've got quite a few buses to do. Uh, we've got four in total. This is the second out of four. Um, obviously, I don't know when the other two are going to arrive yet. Um, one of them, one of them is coming off Dean um, as a Christmas present for me, and uh, another one I've ordered from another seller online. Um, so it depends when that's going to be delivered. I don't know yet. But in the meantime, I thought, well, I've been absolutely dying to do this one. Uh, so I thought, go on, I'll do it now. So this is a uh, a, a vintage bus, this one. It's um, a Leyland National. Uh, we will... Uh, You'll find out a little bit about the Leyland National later on in the video because I've done a little bit of research. I like doing that now with new bus models. Um, in fact, I do it with every bus model now. I, I do some research on it and write some notes down and read them at the end of the video. So, yes, this is uh, a Leyland National. It's only a single decker, this one, but it's all right. Made by EFE, exclusive first edition. We'll have a, a little look at the box in just a second. And there's quite a bit of information on the back as well about their models, which I'll show you and I'll read out. So let's see what you can get from the box. And I'll just show you first. I'll just let you have a look. <laughs> There you go. I'll just shut up while you while you read that. <clears throat> Says it on this side as well. If you want to read that, you can always pause the video and full screen and have a read through it. Show some other models on the back as well that they have. Uh, there you go then. Uh, is there anything on the, the underside? I believe there is, isn't there? I don't know if I held it the right way for you. Okay, so it's time for me to have a look now. So I'll just get Grandad Murray's magnifying glass. And uh, start with the front. Let's have a look. Uh, one in 76 scale precision die cast models with plastic parts. Exclusive first edition. Leyland National Mark 1. West Midlands 17213. Please retain this information for further reference. Conserver. Okay. Contents not suitable for children under the age of three years due to small parts. Designed in the United Kingdom. Manufactured in China. And then let's just have a look on the back. So, exclusive first edition. The collector's diecast models. Attention, our attention to detail. Exclusive first edition. 
Exclusive first editions are the leading brand of 1 in 76 scale die cast vehicles for model collectors and railway enthusiasts. Each item is produced with the closest attention to detail and authenticity, being only produced once at an accurate 1 in 76 scale or double O gauge. Authentic and precise re reproductions. All subjects are researched meticulously and made to the highest standards of detail and period effect to recreate the character and spirit of the original vehicle. Being the same scale, the models complement each other and create a fascinating historic collection. Finished to the highest standards. Exclusive first editions take great pride in setting new standards of excellence in producing our models. This combined with expertly detailed hand finishing gives each model its unique individuality and collectability. All right, okay then. So I think there's nothing more to do but get the model out. Let's get it out, oh yes. Now, this is what I love about these uh, exclusive first edition models. You don't need a screwdriver for them. They come in what I call the block of ice. That's quite a nice background, isn't it? Quite nice, actually. Let's pop the box to one side. Yeah, so they come in what I call a block of ice. It's like a, it's like a plastic packaging. So basically to get the model out what you want to do is you want to lift off the first one and then very carefully push the model out like that wow wow we gosh this is a vintage bus look at that Sorry for I will show you in a minute. Gosh. That is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Wow. Very detailed. I've never even seen one of these in real life, let alone in model form. Right, let me show you. We'll start from the front. Look at look at it. Look how vintage it is. Look. Where is it going? Pie green? I'll have a look in a minute. Wow. This is very... Uh, very old-fashioned, isn't it? Very vintage. I love the colour scheme, though. Um... It looks a lot lighter than it. It looks a lot lighter on camera than how I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it like, uh, like a, a very like a beige. Well, it's, it's coming up on camera as a sort of a custard yellow, but it's not. It's not as bright as that. It's a bit darker. Um, best example I can give you going off topic a bit have you ever tried those is it McVitie's who make them the gold bars like the chocolate biscuits they're called gold bars if you have one of them they're like a like a, a dark creamy color uh, this is the best that's the best example I could give you that's sort of what it reminds me of um, in, the, in terms of color so uh, and obviously you've got the navy blue stripe going through it. Wow, it's just fantastic, isn't it? I really want to take my time with this one. I don't want to rush it. So uh, obviously that's the driver's window. You've got the indicator there. Uh, no hubcap detailing, just blackened hubcaps. So a little bit of information on there. I don't know what. Got the indicator there. WM. 
West Midlands. This is a very, very old Travel West Midlands bus. Um, Pie Green might be Pie Pays, what's now known as Pie Pays, perhaps. It says, uh, I think it says West Midlands up there. And then the window, looks like you can open that one. And you can open that one. That looks like possibly maybe the fuel cap halfway along. And you can open that one. Not open that one. There's the emergency exit at the back. This one's got a roof pod. I know what that's for, but uh, I'm not going to tell you just yet. And then going to the back of the bus. And it's got an all blue engine compartment there. It's quite nice actually, isn't it? They should have done that all the way along, I think. Would have looked good. You got the indicator, the reverse light, the brake light. Like that all the way along. The number plate there. The engine compartment door doesn't open. Really nice, isn't it? You can see down the bus as well. Let's turn it around, having a look down this side now, and we're coming to the passenger side. So obviously that window opens, like the other side, and that one does. And that one does. And then here's the front doors. Look at those. You've got the indicator light there. Nice curved wheel arches on this one. And not like the Leyland Links where they were uh, slightly square shaped, the wheel arches. Nice and round on this one. And then coming back to the front, I've noticed there's no mirrors on this, but then again, the older older vehicles didn't really uh, didn't really have mirrors. Think about it, the old cars as well never used to. Um, I'm not sure when this was first built. But so yeah, there's no mirrors on it. But I guess you didn't really need them. What with the big windscreen and the uh, the big driver side window, I take it the driver could just look out easily. I'm just having a look on the back. West Midlands, eighteen sixteen is the fleet number. Is that OCI? I can't tell that. Can't tell. Eighteen sixteen. Uh, the not number nine oh six. Pie green, limited stop. C C. I don't know. Is it O C X? I really can't tell the the number plate, unfortunately. Let's have a look on the underneath then, see if there's any detailing. Uh, not an awful lot. A little bit of axle detailing. And you've got the double wheels, the double tyres there. There's a little bit of engine detailing, I think that is, because the, obviously the engine was rear-mounted. Could possibly be a bit of engine underside engine detailing. I like the roof, I do. Um, look at that. Like serrated, uh, not, uh, what would you say? It's like textured, it's got grooves all along the roof. 
It's really nice actually, I like that. It's really cool. Wheels are nice nice and free rolling and Yeah, it's really nice. I like that, so I think it's time to set her down, don't you? Time to set her down and uh Let's see what we can find out about her. So I've only got four little uh, paragraphs that I found. There she is, look, she's driving along the road. Right, let's see what we can find out about the Leyland National. The Leyland National was an integrally constructed British step-floor single-decker bus manufactured in large quantities between 1972 and 1985. It was developed as a joint project between two nationalised industries, the National Bus Company and British Leyland. Buses were constructed at a specially built factory at the Lily Hall Industrial Estate in Workington. The Leyland National was built with integ integral modular construction and a rear engine. All components were designed for ease of construction and maintenance. Uh, sorry, replacement. Well, I suppose they were constructed for maintenance, as, ease of maintenance as well. Um, and also replacement, they could be replaced, parts could be replaced easily on them. Until 1978, it was built with a roof-mounted pod at the rear, housing heating equipment, which blew warm air out at roof level. At first, the pod was almost the length of a bay and appeared to give a transatlantic feel to the bus. In 1976, a shorter version of the roof pod was introduced, along with the battery being relocated to the front underneath the driver's cab. The bus was available in three lengths, the majority of them being 10.3 metres or 11.3 metres long. It was easy to spot the longer ones as its main side windows were all the same length. On the shorter models, the windows were shorter except for one in the middle, where the exit doors were located on dual door variants. The third length was 10.9 metres, specially produced for Australian operations due to stringent axle weight limits. The earlier vehicles were only available in a limited number of standard colours, for example, dark red, light red and dark green. The National Bus Company made a decision to standardise on two basic colours, poppy red and leaf green. However, at London Transport's insistence, London Bus Red was also added to the colour chart. In total, London Transport owned over 500 Leyland Nationals. So there you go, just a little bit of information about the bus then. Uh, it's quite interesting, isn't it, actually? I do enjoy doing research on these buses. I think I'm becoming quite a little uh, quite a little bus fan now. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. But it's fun, you know. I've, all, I've always liked buses. And my dad's a bus driver. My cousin's a bus driver. My friend Adam Flavel, he loves buses. So I think, you know, we've always shared that. We've always... We've always liked travelling round on the bus together. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, it's thanks to Adam, actually, that I've been able to do so many model bus unboxings on my channel because the majority of them were, were for him, that I'd bought for him, or, you know, he'd, I'd buy and then he'd, he'd pay me back in other ways. Uh, but he's, all, he's always said, I don't mind you doing an unboxing and review sort of a, a premiere for what for what is about to receive isn't it 
But yeah, this is a, a beautiful bus, and I just love the livery. It really is. It's it's basic, don't get me wrong, but obviously back then it would be. Uh, they would be basic. Um, because if these buses were leased out to companies, they'd want them. Well, they'd want them in the most basic livery possible. Uh, just so they could operate for any bus company, really. I mean, this this particular one, with it being navy blue and cream, without the West Midlands branding on it, that really could operate for any company. Well, yeah, it's really, really nice. I think it's going to... Uh, not only add a bit of nostalgia to my collection, but it's certainly it's like very interesting colour scheme as well, and it's going to look very nice behind my uh, Volvo B10. So I think that's pretty much all I can say about this bus. Um, we've had a look, we've had a good look at it, and um, I can't wait to get uh, add it to my collection now. And until the other buses come, that's uh, pretty much all I can do. I don't know whether there'll be any more unboxing videos in between or any other videos I make on the run up to Christmas now. But um, as soon as I receive the other two buses, I will, of course, unbox them here on my channel and you can have a look at them. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up. Leave a comment in the comment section. It's always nice to hear from you all. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you have subscribed, thank you. Don't forget to share the channel as well. Try and get me some more subscribers. And until the next video, whenever that may be, or indeed whatever that may be, take care, stay safe, stay strong, and I'll bid you farewell.